Has AS Mel suddenly fallen from grace? The deadly rare earth leverage in US China talks. Can you believe it? AS Mel, the world's sole manufacturer of advanced lithography machines, is facing a production shutdown? Its Q1 2025 earnings report delivered a shockwave. New orders plummeted by 44%, EUV lithography machine orders were halved, and the stock price tanked 5% pre market. Even more critically, with China's rare earth export controls implemented on December 1st, this Dutch giant has been stripped of its tools of the trade. The core components of its lithography machines are entirely reliant on Chinese rare earths. Don't mistake the lithography machine for pure high tech. It is fundamentally a precision instrument built from rare earths. Just as a car needs an engine, the neodymium iron boron permanent magnet motor is AS Mel's heart and the disposium-containing laser is its eye. Without these rare earths, where China controls over 90% of the processing capacity, the most brilliant technology becomes an empty shell. It's like a master chef losing salt. No matter the skill, the dish cannot be cooked. The dramatic twist is that the U.S., the traditional arbiter of global tech power, has been forced into a rare strategic passive position. For the past decade, the U.S. has leveraged its technological barriers and geopolitical advantages, using cutting-edge technologies like chips and lithography machines as a killer weapon to contain competitors. In 2020, the U.S. forced ASML to halt the export of AUV lithography machines to China, attempting to cut off the lifeline of China's semiconductor industry upgrade. In 2022, it collaborated with allies to build a semiconductor supply chain alliance, weaving a tight web of technological blockade. However, the tables have turned. While the U.S. focused on its military-industrial complex and AI sector, it suddenly realized its own rare earth magnet production capacity accounts for only 3% of the world's total. These critical minerals, known as industrial vitamins, are essential raw materials for advanced missile guidance systems, MRI equipment, and core components of AI chips. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, over 80% of the defense industry's annual rare earth demand relies on imports from China. Even the Pentagon's latest hypersonics program has been delayed due to rare earth supply shortages. Now, facing China's increasingly comprehensive rare earth export control system, the previously imperious U.S. government has been forced to lower its stance urgently seeking a green channel for rare earth supplies through high-level dialogue and trade negotiations. This dramatic reversal in the tech rivalry reflects deep changes in the global industrial chain and marks a significant event in the restructuring of the international strategic landscape. Why did ASML suddenly fall from grace? What flaws are hidden in the so-called Western alternatives? And just how deadly is the rare earth leverage in the US-China negotiating room? Let's unpack the hidden battle that is shaking up the global supply chain. I. ASML's supply cut, reality, from 49% revenue to zero raw material who could have predicted that ASML, which relied on the Chinese market for 49% of its revenue in 2023, would be backed into a corner in just two years. After the U.S. stepped up controls in 2024, ASML not only canceled exports of models like the NXT, 2000i to China, but its own production line faced trouble. The core. Blueprint E. Rare earth material for its lithography machines must all be sourced from China. The data is particularly damning in Q1 2025. ASML's revenue from the China region directly plummeted to 27%, with new orders slashed from 7.1 billion euros to 3.94 billion euros. The pain extends to the three major U.S. equipment makers. LAM Research and KLA saw their China revenue share crash from over 30% to around 15%, with only applied materials barely maintaining 24% by skirting regulatory lines. But ASML's vulnerability is greater, its rare earth dependence is three times higher than that of US companies. China's controls immediately severed its supply chain. Commentary This is not an accidental shortage, it's a precise counterattack. Tracing ASML's alignment with U.S. efforts to implement layer upon layer of export restrictions on chip equipment to China, 
its management may never have anticipated the fatal flaw lurking beneath this technological rivalry. China is not only its largest global market for lithography machines but also the irreplaceable supply hub for critical rare earth materials like gallium and germanium. According to the International Rare Earths Association, over 90% of high-purity gallium raw material comes from China. These seemingly insignificant metal films are the neural synapses for core EUV lithography machine components. When ASML unilaterally tore up billions of dollars in China orders in 2024, deeply tying its advanced equipment delivery process to geopolitical strategy, it quietly severed its own supply chain's lifeline. This gamble on technological hegemony began to show its failure early in 2025. The Dutch lithography machine production line was forced to halt for maintenance due to rare earth raw material shortages. Delivery times for some equipment models surged from 18 months to 36 months, prompting customers like TSMC and Samsung to seek alternatives. More ironically, ASML's proud, technological moat is being washed away by a fundamental resource bottleneck, even with the world's most precise optical systems and nanoscale etching technology. Without a stable supply of rare earth materials, a multi-million dollar lithography machine is ultimately reduced to a glass giant displayed in a lab. 2. Western Substitution Dreams Shattered $100 billion over three years, not even 10% of capacity seeing ASML throttled, the US and Europe urgently cried for. Self-sufficiency. But reality is less than a joke. The U.S. threw money at rare earth production back in 2022, yet by 2025, its domestic refining capacity is still less than 15% of the global total, and the refining cost is three times that of China's. The EU's plan is even more far-fetched, a rare earth recycling program, claiming to extract materials from e-waste. But the actual recovery rate is less than 5%, not even enough to meet ASML's daily consumption. The most ironic detail comes from a U.S. congressional report. In 2024, the world's five largest semiconductor equipment manufacturers sold $38 billion worth of equipment to China, accounting for 39% of their total revenue, 66% higher than in 2022. What does this show? While Western companies publicly preach, decoupling from China, their actions are honest. China holds not only rare earths but also an irreplaceable market. Japan's Tokyo Electron is a prime example. Through cooperation with China, its China revenue share reached 48%, making it its largest market. Commentary The US and European substitution plans are fundamentally self-deception. China controls 90% of the world's rare earth smelting capacity, not just through abundant resources, but through decades of accumulated technological and cost advantages. The U.S. wants to skip the refining stage and focus on recycling, and the EU wants to use an environmental card to bypass China. But can ASML wait three to five years for production capacity to ramp up? This exposes the fatal flaw of the West. They always want to use hegemony to seize the results, but are unwilling to commit to genuine industrial chain construction ultimately being harshly taught by reality. 3. The U.S.-China Negotiating Standoff U.S. demands rare earths, China demands fairness on one side is ASML's production crisis, on the other, a high-stakes tug-of-war at the U.S.-China negotiating table. The U.S. has recently been signaling a willingness to lift some tariffs on China, but the conditions are that China must buy more soybeans and Boeing aircraft, and guarantee rare earth supply. China's stance this time is firm. Want rare earths? First, lift the lithography machine export restrictions and ease the technological blockade. It must be a fair, equal value exchange. No more. Empty handed gains. Where does the US get the nerve to make demands? Frankly, they are desperate. Their F 35 fighter jets and hypersonic missiles rely on Chinese rare earth magnets. A supply cutoff would bring military production to a halt. Even more embarrassing, the rare earth controls the U.S. itself implemented have been useless. While U.S. corporate sales to China dropped in 2024, the top five manufacturers combined still sold $38 billion worth of equipment. 
no one truly dares to abandon the Chinese market. Commentary This resource and technology rivalry is not as simple. Who chokes whom? Zero-sum game. At its core, it concerns the fundamental principle of fairness in international cooperation. China's rare earth export control policy is by no means the retaliatory measure, the outside world claims, but a set of rules established to build a fair and reasonable international resource trade order within the context of global supply chain restructuring. Rare earth is a strategic resource essential for new energy, electronics, and aerospace. China has long supplied over 80% of the world's rare earths, thanks to its advanced mining and refining technology and massive industrial scale, yet it has never achieved commensurate influence. These control measures essentially demand that global supply chain participants, while enjoying the benefits of China's resources and market, must respect China's industrial security and development rights. Only then can the long-standing, America first, and technological hegemony, mindset of some nations be broken, paving the way for a fair technological development environment based on rules and respect for national sovereignty. Otherwise, if double standards become the norm for international cooperation, global technological innovation will inevitably stall due to a lack of trust.